1994, I went again, filed papers with the federal court to stop Judge Austin from prosecuting me, that his trial was illegal, and that one, he didn't have subject matter jurisdiction, because family court has no jurisdiction over separation agreements. I also argued that I was being deprived of my constitutional right to a public trial, a jury trial, that these statutes closing the courts are illegal. I ended, did end up, before Austin, getting a public trial, but I never got my jury trial. That these orders were null and void, that they were holding me in contempt of. So I filed. I ended up appealing Judge Austin's ruling, or Judge McAvoy's ruling. Let me just make a couple of comments about him. Now, I'm arguing I'm being deprived of a jury trial, public trial, and a number of things. His first order was, the plaintiff has brought a, by means of order to show cause a request for an injunction prohibiting the defendants from taking any further action in a pending state court matter. After a review of the documents, it is hereby ordered that the plaintiff's order to show cause is denied. In other words, he doesn't care that they are violating my rights and every other person's rights in the state of New York to a public trial, a jury trial that's having to deal with family court. Then, he ended up dismissing my whole complaint. And in it, he states, Collins commenced this action giving rise to this appeal, or this, excuse me, his order. He states, in his complaint, plaintiff seeks, uh, seeks a declaratory judgment stating that sections 433 and 435 of the Family Court Act are unconstitutional, and he also seeks injunctive relief, which would bar further proceedings in the Saratoga County Family Court. Plaintiff claims that the practice of family court pursuant to 433 and 435, which allows closed trials, violates Fifth and Sixth Amendment rights to a public and jury trial. Further, furthermore, in his papers, oh, oh, wait a second here. I also argued that trial and since Judge Austin acted without jurisdiction, he, can, he cannot be granted judicial immunity from suit. So he's admitting what I've put in here. Then he states, it is clear that federal courts are without power to review state court proceedings. Well, if that is true, it says here, 13 minutes, to redress the deprivation under color of state law, statute ordinance, regulation, customer usage of any right, privilege, or immunity secured by the Constitution of the United States. The district court shall have original jurisdiction of any civil action. That right there statute throws his argument out, but he ignores that. Every person who under co color of any statute or is regulated customer use or instead of subjects or causes to to be subject to any citizen of the United States or other person within the jurisdiction thereof to the de deprivation of any rights, privileges, or immunity secured by the Constitution and the laws. That's what they're doing. He does have jurisdiction over both of those things. But he doesn't want to address it. I don't have jurisdiction. He most certainly did. And if you read the case law, just to give you a couple examples, federal courts have a duty to entertain solid claim of unconstitutional restraint by state under color of its law, and jurisdiction of federal court is not defeated by anything which may occur in state proceedings. Make a voice, a two-bit lion, whore, just like Kay, out to strip us of our rights. Where fundamental civil rights are at issue, federal courts should hesitate to abstain. These cases, and I've listed a lot of them on my website, in all my papers which are on my website. So, 
you know, for him to sit there and state that federal courts are without power is a bunch of bull. It's a downright lie. In this case, not only would federal court review of the do decisions made in state court violate the Rooker-Feldman doctrine, the outcome of plaintiff's trial has not yet been determined, and so there is yet to be a state decision available for review. It doesn't make any difference. It doesn't say that there has to be a state decision able for review. If they're stripping you of your constitutional rights, you have a right to go into federal court and have the matter heard. Not in New York State and not by the federal judges in New York because they are corrupt. Make no mistake about it. Judge McAvoy is a terrorist. He terrorizes families. How many cases has Judge McAvoy fixed over the years for the state of New York or for the federal government. If he's fixing my cases, you know damn well he's fixing a lot of them. He's a coward. Abstention is warranted under the Younger Doctrine for both review of state court actions and facial challenges to the constitutionality of provisions of the New York State Family Court Act. That's a bunch of bull. There are exceptions to the um, Younger Doctrine, uh, which I've previously argued. You know, right here, a federal district court, New York. The cases which in the cases in which injunctions have been issued against state officials for violating Fourteenth Amendment rights. In the last two decades or legion, such injunctions issue as a matter of right where a violation of constitutionality right has been proved. This court has no discretion to deny injunctive relief to a person who clearly establishes. Well, they won't let me establish. They won't let me have a trial. He just takes the paperwork and buries it, dismisses it. And yet they're supposed to be giving pro se litigants and plaintiffs, they have to rule most favorably in their direction. He doesn't rule favorably in the direction when these issues are raised. He doesn't care. He states he's supposed to do that, and then he goes into why he's not going to. The younger doctor, you know, you have constitutional rights. The younger doctor doesn't apply when you're being stripped of your right to a public trial or a jury trial or a court of proper jurisdiction. Also, exemption should not be avoided simply because plaintiff's claims allege bad faith. I didn't allege bad faith. I alleged downright illegal activity on the part of these judges. It is clear that they are not met in this case. They weren't met in this case. You know, then I appeal. Where is it here? And in my appeal, the federal court have jurisdiction where a litigant is being deprived of his constitutional right to public jury and a court of proper jurisdiction. McAvoy wouldn't even address these issues. He mentions them, and then he blows them off. Like, you can't go into federal court and demand your rights, your constitutional rights. Is failure to pay for a, a, a crime under New York State statute or case law? It most certainly is. And I provided the documentation for it. Is Family Court Act 433 on its face? And as or is being applied in depriving litigants of a public trial? Why should anybody in this state be deprived of their right to a public trial or a jury trial when they're facing imprisonment in jail? are facing the loss of their children. The court is required to be open. It's not. He doesn't care. Does the New York State Constitution and our United States Supreme Court rulings require civil proceedings in family court to be open? Yes. Does family violate a litigant's constitutional right to a public trial in family court when the potential sentence imposed exceeds six months in jail or a $5,000 fine? Number six, should the federal court abstain from acting under the Younger Doctrine where there is the issue of constitutionality of state statute on its face or as is being applied? 
let me put, give you the case law I relied upon so you can decide. Moore versus Sims, U.S. Supreme Court ruling 422 U.S. 415. Younger and its counterpart, which we apply today, do of course allow intervention in those cases where the district court properly finds proceeding is motivated by a desire to harass or is conducted in bad faith or where the challenge statute is flagrantly and patently volative of expressed constitutional pro prohibition in every clause, sentence, and paragraph and in whatever manner and against whomever in an effort might be to apply it. Dombrowski, our Young versus Harris. Dombrowski represents an exception to the general rule that federal courts should not interfere with state pro criminal prosecution. The exception does not arise merely because prosecutions are threatened, to which the First Amendment will be the proper defense. Is governed statutes which are a bunderbuss by themselves or when used in mass, those that have an overbroad sweep. So if the rule were otherwise, the contours of regulation would have to be hammered out case by case and tested only by those hardy enough to risk criminal prosecution to determine the proper scope of regulation. That's what I've done. I've been forced to do. Special, um, right here. A state enforcement officer is someone acting on a collar of state law even though he may be missing, misusing his authority. And prosecution under a patently unconstitutional statute is a deprivation of rights, privileges, or immunity secured by the Constitution. Suits and equity obviously includes injunctions. There's a lot of case law supporting my position. Right here. These sections, title provides in relevant part. This was under Bartholomew versus Port. These sections and US, 28 U.S.C. 2201 and 2202 provide this court with jurisdiction to hear claim that ordinances or state statutes are unconstitutional on their face or it's being applied. So obviously Judge McAvoy lies. And so does the Court of Appeals, the New York State Court of Appeals. They're out. New York State is a liberal democratic state. They want to strip everybody of their rights. It's a socialist state. Or you can call it a communist state. Is the issue of mootness? No, they shouldn't move. Does a judge have judicial for his actions as a state constitution, state statute? Yes, he did. I demonstrated he didn't have jurisdiction from the beginning because there was no referral and there was no, there were separation agreements which the family court has no jurisdiction to enforce or modify, pursuant to a New York State Court of Appeals ruling. Do judges called conspirator, conspirators have judicial immunity for their actions? Of course they don't. Even if the judge did, they wouldn't. You know, I made the right arguments. They don't want to hear it. They want to strip everybody because if they ruled in my favor, everybody that's been in, involved in family court in New York State or has been sentenced to jail in a family court proceeding has been denied their due process rights. They can sue. Sue these public defenders, the attorneys, the judges, only if the judges are acting with outside their jurisdiction. If they have jurisdiction, you can't sue them, but you can sue the other parties. But if you have a separation agreement that they're enforcing, they don't have jurisdiction over that, according to the New York State Court of Appeals ruling. So, then we go to the Court of Appeals. Collins commenced his action rise to his appeal on July 14, 1994, seeking injunctive relief, damages, and a declaratory judgment that New York Tate Family Court Act 433 are unconstitutional. 
Collins alleges Sixth Amendment rights were violated when he was denied a public and a public trial by jury. Collins also claims that the defendants also conspired to interfere illegally with his contractual rights under the separation agreement. Finally, Collins asserts that family court lacks jurisdiction over his proceedings. They don't address anything. They put in what I allege. It is well settled that federal courts lack jurisdiction to review state court decisions. That's not what federal court jurisdiction says. It's not what the case law says. Federal courts have a duty to entertain solid claim of unconstitutional restraint. They don't want to go in and depriving me of these rights. They lie, they lie, they lie. They put this stuff out. The thing is, we also agree that with the district court that even if the court had jurisdiction to review the state court proceedings, it would have had to abstain under the doctrine denounced by Younger. I just went over that. I'm being denied my constitutional rights. So is every man, woman, and child in family court being deprived of their rights to a jury trial if they face imprisonment or detention in the case of children? Why should citizens of this state be deprived because of Judge McAvoy and the Court of Appeals? The three, the three judges that want to strip us of our rights are... Robert J. Minor, Guido Calabrese, and Milton Pollock. They're all a disgrace to the Constitution. They're there to protect the corrupt judges and to protect the corrupt system. They're all terrorists. They all took an oath of office to defend and protect the Constitution. They have all done the complete opposite. They have stripped the citizens of this state of their constitutional rights and covered up people stripping us of our rights. These judges need to be put in jail, including McAvoy. And I don't care about the statute of limitation. They're lucky they've had one person over them keep covering up, and of course your district attorneys, I don't care if they're Republican or Democrat, won't do anything. How are they going to go after these judges? They're not. they got to get rulings from them. They'd be ostracized. But they should be removed from office if they don't have whatever it takes to do their job. They took an oath. There needs to be Senate, U.S. United States Senate hearings as to what is going on in the New York State Judiciary. And let me also say... When Donald Trump stated he wasn't going to get a fair trial it, with his, the lawsuit concerning the Trump University, I can believe him. Because as you see, these judges are all covering up for each other. And you know they didn't have a case when they settled for $25 million. He paid All supporting documentation for the, my videos can be found at www.justicefornewyork.com